I was sent these notebooks today from Sue's. Um, they are, well, let me show you this first. This is really funny. She found these in Tiger. Tiger books. Or Tiger, Tiger shop. I don't know. I don't know what Tiger is. I think Tiger is the shop. But we don't have one around here. So she sent me these notebooks. But I opened it and it has hi, you know, da, da, da. and there it has this on the front. You are a rare oddity. <laughs> That's so me. <laughs> I love it. And then she's made me this, I think. It's a, like a little envelope thing with a raven on. Pretty. I like it. But these tiger notebooks. Let me open. I'll do a proper talk on these once I've tried them out. But you get three in a pack. And they are pretty thick. I'd say they're about 64 pages. They look about the same as a moleskin. Paper feels like moleskin paper. Maybe a bit thicker. But it's made from bamboo. Now I've seen paper made from elephant dung and all sorts of things. But I've never seen paper made from bamboo. These are stuck books. So they're not really ideal for using in a passport Midori or anything like that. Um, you can see, if it will focus, you can see here it's got a flat edge and then it's got glue. So it's it's a glued book, not a sewn book. And the difference is they clamp this set together, paste glue on the outside, and then they wrap this black thing around it and that holds the book together. So there's no sewn binding. Now that usually means that when you open it flat, like that, it splits along the binding. See? And you can see the glue. And that normally means that the pages come out really easily. Now I don't like that for journaling, but I do like it for little notebooks that I carry around because I like to be able to remove pages easily and put them in my other books. Uh, and these Yep, these pretty much, they come out really easily like a normal note, notepad block, almost. So those are pretty cool. Um, I'm going to try the paper and see how it works with various different things. Uh, because I've never tried bamboo paper. I'm not particularly interested in the notebooks themselves. It's the bamboo paper I'm interested in to see what it's like. Because it feels quite thick and sturdy. But, you know... It all depends on the water absorbency. That's the most important thing, especially for journaling. How much water does it absorb? Because that will affect your fountain pen ink. It will affect your watercolours. It will affect even your acrylic paints. You know, everything like that. What does it absorb? That is the important part. Because if it's too absorbent, all the water will leach into the paper and spread underneath in the fibres of the paper. And then you get bleeding and ghosting and blotting and feathering and all that kind of nasty stuff so yes i shall have a play with those and see so thank you Suze, for those and uh yeah i think i'm going to go and have some lunch and then i'll perhaps have a play with these and see what they're like although i do have other work i should be doing <laughs> lots and lots of other work i should be doing you gotta take a break you can't work all the time can you since I've already started with a Happy Mail theme for today's vlog, I thought I'd continue with it because I was sent some gorgeous bits and pieces while I was sick and I do apologise if I miss anybody out. Um, offhand I can only think of the two, but I'm sure I got another one and I can't remember what it was. So if you sent me something, please message me and let me know so that I can go and dig it out because I'm sure there was another one. Anyway. Got some really cute bits and pieces here from my bestie over in um, Spain. She sent me this adorable little witch. Isn't she cute? And her little kitty cat there. She's so cute. I love her. She's really nice and she's very detailed. I might have to draw her actually. I think she's really pretty. Even though she's got a strange face, she's got kind of a strange potato like face, but even that's kind of cute. She reminds me of Morph from the TV series. Yeah, so she's gorgeous. And 
she didn't send me any details of this and it doesn't have any information on it but she lives in Barcelona and a lot of these things are handmade over there so it does have a very handmade feel to it so I suspect this is a handmade thing from Barcelona I shall have to check with her um, if she knows what shop or whatever it came from but it's really cute I love her and she also sent me this Yukio Taro. Now the Yukio style, it's a Japanese art style. It's very detailed, uh, very symbolic. Uh, everything has a reason, you know, everything. If you, if you know about Japanese culture at all, you'll know that everything in their paintings has symbolism and a reason for it you know there's a reason for a particular color there's a reason that a particular kimono like this one she has stripes with a pattern um so there's a reason that she has that particular stripe and pattern there's a reason her headdress is done in a certain way with two pins you know it's a very in-depth and uh, allegorical style of painting and it's incredibly detailed so I'll just show you a couple of the cards. And he has uh, the bamboo stick is the wand. The high priestess. Isn't she beautiful? Look at all that detailing. And they have the, um, the names written in Japanese as well, which is really useful. And also the numbers. So it's useful if you're trying to learn Japanese. So the two of swords, swords equates to um, swords, obviously, but the samurai sword, and it equates to spades. We've got the coins, which equate to diamonds and pentacles. There's the empress, a beautiful, beautiful ceremonial kimono. I think there's a special name for that particular type of kimono, but I can't remember what it's called. And then we've got the chalices, obviously, which is the cups or hearts. And again, it's got the heart symbol. They look on the surface like they don't have a particular, like it's just three cups. But these particular birds, the type of bird and the lotus flower and the lily... You know, they all have symbolic meaning. So if you understand what the lotus flower symbolises and the, the bird, then you can understand the meaning of the card as well. So it's just like any other tarot deck. It just, it looks a little bit like it's just pip cards, but they are decorated. You just have to understand what they symbolise. Pentacles again, cups again. The world. Isn't she beautiful? Just showing you some of these, the chariot with the, is it called a sedan cart? I believe it's a sedan chair. I think it's called a sedan chair. The bamboo wands for the clubs. So very, very beautiful, very detailed deck. I'll have to do a proper look at this at some point for Witchy Wednesday. But... Um, the knight of swords with the traditional way of drawing the japanese horse with the very small head and the very very powerful muscular body and spindly legs that's a very typical uh, japanese style the knight of wands so there's a, a side by side comparison of the two knights You can see straight away, this one is obviously a warrior, this one is more of a, perhaps a counsellor or a politician or something like that. The hermit, the old wise man with his traditional candle lantern and his bamboo wand. The devil.
the tower with the pagoda and the falling people. Death. The King of Cups. Again, more of a philosophical feel to this one. Temperance with her water. Very uh, Aquarian card, that one, with the flowing water. So, yeah, I'll do, I might do a, a more in-depth look of the, at these, but uh, beautiful cards, beautiful. And look at the design on the back, isn't it pretty? Oh, gorgeous. So thank you to Anam for those. And then I got a huge box of goodies from Punjab. Uh, this is from a friend of mine, Mandy, who she actually went to the same university as me. She's from this area, uh, but currently she's back home in Punjab with family, I believe. Uh, and she sent me a huge box of goodies. She did send me some lovely snacks. Um, I had some, if you're in the UK, you'll know what I mean, uh, knickknacks that were masala flavour. Oh, and they were gorgeous. And I had some things that were a bit like Bombay mix. Um, and I can't remember what cut, what flavour it said they were. Maddie destroyed the packets, so. But they were really nice. They tasted, oddly enough, of very spicy deviled eggs. But they, they were gorgeous. I couldn't get enough of them. So they were very nice. The masala ones were a little bit hot for me, but they were nice with a bit of cream cheese dip. Uh, but anyway, she sent me these. These are beautiful. She sent me some... <clears throat> and I'm, I've opened most of these already. She sent me some gorgeous um, Indian incense. So we've got um, the Shandanam prayer sticks. I haven't used either of these, so I don't know what they smell like. But I suspect they're very similar to Nag Champa, but probably not as pungent or not as overpowering. Um, oh, it says on here this one is fragrance of sandalwood. I love sandalwood. And then this one is Temple Incense, Gold Edition. Now that uh, smells like the gold Nag Champa Incense, but again, not as pungent, not as... It's better quality. Mmm, very nice. I love those. Can't wait to try those. She sent me two packs of... Bindies, which are really, really cute, and I can't see them. I took them out to show Tracy the other day, and I can't see them now. Hopefully I'll find them, and I'll, I'll insert a clip of them, because they're just beautiful. But she also sent me these uh, sticky crystals. So I've got large kind of aqua pearl ones, and large pastel pink pearl ones. And then I've got these diamante green and um, pearlescent ones again large and then these small diamantes aren't they beautiful very very nice lots and lots of them so I should be decorating with those on lots of things she also sent me these beautiful bra uh, braids these are uh, the kind of braids that they use on the edges of saris and things and aren't they gorgeous this has got gold diamante in it so this is like the kind of stuff that they put around the edge of a veil for their um well they use they wear they wear this kind of stuff every day but over here you tend to see this kind of stuff used for things like weddings or bridesmaids or something um or or ceremonial outfits rather than everyday outfits but there is a girl up the road from me who wears the most beautiful saris uh, and she also wears I'm not sure what they're called the outfits with the where they're the top and tunic and trousers um, and she has this kind of stuff embroidered on her clothes 
and she makes her own stuff and it's just amazing. I always compliment her on her outfits because she just looks fantastic and I can't believe how much dedication and time goes into making these by hand. I've got a beautiful green one there with gold edging. These are all about half a metre long so they're a really good size for using for something practical like edging a top or edging a neck piece or something or you know perhaps even putting on a cushion cover these would be really nice to add to a cushion cover i've got the same one there in purple and gold Isn't that a gorgeous color and it's all they're all sari silk and beautifully made they're all they're all backed on this webbing you know, a, a lot of this stuff, you can buy it over here, but it's very cheaply made and it wouldn't have the backing. It would just have the front stuff. But because over there, this is normal dress for them. You know, this is the equivalent of over here. We have satin, satin ribbon and rear crack. And if you're making dresses almost all the time, you end up putting something like that on if you want decoration. This is normal everyday stuff for them. So over here it's quite difficult to get, even though we do have a couple of sari shops locally. Um, but they don't sell this kind of quality. This one is lovely. This is a beautiful teal colour, all you people who like teal and gold. Look at that. Oh, that's got a bit of sellotape on it, sorry. Look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? Just amazing. Oh. I don't know if these are machine made or made by hand. They look like they are probably machine made. They're a bit too um, even to be made by hand, I think. I've seen the girl, the girl up the road, I can't remember her name. I'm terrible with names. She has this kind of embroidery, but she makes it herself. She weaves it herself. It's fascinating. I'll have to catch her one day and see if I can get get her to show me how she does it because I'd, I'd love to see how it's actually made this is um, embroidered and it's got little gold gold sequins all over it so it's really sparkly and it's got little tiny mirrors in it and everything isn't it beautiful I love this kind of stuff I really do it's so ornate and then I've got three the same here these are all the, uh, I think these are all the same but they've got they're, they're three different colours. So I've got a green one, a purple one. Oh no, they do have different designs on. I thought they were all the same. They look all the same when they're rolled up. And then I've got a, a ginger one, which is actually see-through. This is a mesh. You can see through this one. So this is more, this is much lighter. Uh, might be used for a veil or something, whereas this is heavy. So it might be used at the bottom of a tunic or something to, to hold a tunic down but isn't it gorgeous oh I just love all this stuff it's so pretty I'll roll those back up again in a minute then she sent me um she sent me some of these I'd forgotten about these 2020 butter jira cookies so I don't know what those are I might have to try these later and something I found quite surprising, um, when you get uh, snacks and things from most Asian countries, especially like China and Japan and Korea, they're nearly always in uh, just Japanese or just Korean or, you know, they might have a specific generic kind of um, writing on that a lot of Asian countries can understand. But on these Indian ones, what I've noticed is half the packet is in Indian and half the packet is in English. Which is unusual. Even on, like, we get a lot of Turkish imports because we've got a lot of kebab shops and things around here. We get a lot of Turkish import coke and things like that. And you'll quite often find that the majority of the can is in Turkish. Uh, and then there's, like, a little bit. Like, one sentence is in English. And it's usually say, saying where it was made. Um, but this is actually like half of it is in English and half of it is in Indian. Um, what would it be? I'm going to sound like an idiot now. Uh, Sanskrit? Is it Sanskrit? 
I don't know, whichever the pretty one is, <laughs> the pretty Hindu style writing, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so that surprised me because usually Asian goods, like I say, they tend to all be, there's, there's no English on them at all. So those look very nice, can't wait to try those. She also sent me this beautiful book with Ohm on it. It's just a thin notebook, but it's got lovely paper. And it's got um, headers and dates, so it'd be good for bullet journaling. The paper feels really nice. Beautiful end pieces on it as well. And she sent me these, which are, I can't remember exactly what she called them. She did send me a beautiful decorated letter with, you know, telling me what all this stuff was called and stuff, but I can't find the letter. I've, because I moved my desk around and it was there, <laughs> like there, and it's not there anymore. So I've moved it somewhere and I can't remember where I've put it, which is very frustrating. So not only are some of the bits missing out of the box, because I received it like three, three and a half weeks ago and I've opened it and used some of it, but I can't find the letter that goes with it either because I've put it away somewhere safe. But these have a specific name and they are used for the end of scarves apparently, as weights for the end of scarves. I think these... I think these would make fantastic earrings. They're just the right length for earrings. If you took the top of this off and put it onto a, a hoop, I think they would look amazing. Um, but she sent me these to go on my shambles. So these are beautiful. I love these. Look at these black ones. They're all fluffy. And they've got sparkly bits on. And there's two of each and then she sent me these as well which are lovely. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Love those. So they also will be making an appearance in my shambles at some point. Uh, and she also sent me this, which I just had to go and get out of my room because I've been wearing this pretty much non-stop since I got it. This is a wrap bracelet. So she got it for me because she knows I have, I, I love my bracelets, but I have issues because I have chubby wrists. Look, my wrists are as big as my fists. So I have real issues with getting bracelets to fit me, but because these are wrap bracelets, they fit anybody. So I can literally just wrap it around like that, move it to it where it's comfortable, and there you go, it fits. <laughs> Obviously on somebody with thin wrists it would be more like a bangle, but um, this is memory wire as well, so you can squish it into place and make it a little looser if you want to. I actually had to unbend the edges because of the circular shape, it was digging into my wrist, but now it fits perfectly. And I love it, it's gorgeous. So, yeah, those are lovely. So thank you so much for that, Mandy. I, um, I won't say your username because I'm not sure if you wanted me to share that or not. Um, but I absolutely adore everything you sent. It was just so useful. I wish I could find those bindies. They're probably with the letter, actually. I know I put them away somewhere safe so I didn't lose them. They are about here somewhere. Um, because I was going to use them as mixed media for my paintings uh, because they're absolutely beautiful but mm, can't can't just put my hand on them just at this second so anyway yes that was my beautiful box from Punjab is it Punjab or the Punjab is it like Ukraine where it's just say you just say Ukraine not the Ukraine or is it oh this is not the actual it was inside another box, it hasn't got the return address on. Because I put that somewhere safe as well. And I don't know where that is either. <laughs> oh, useless. Anyway, 
Yeah, is it is it Punjab or the Punjab? Because Ukraine is Ukraine, but everybody says the Ukraine. I suspect Punjab is the same. Anyway, beautiful box of Indian goodies and my lovely notebooks from Sue's and then my gorgeous tarot deck and little witchy from my friend over in Spain. Feeling very spoilt. What a lovely selection of happy mail. You guys, you're so sweet. Thank you.